Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Today in history, I'm going back to 2014, the 14th of April, uh, to share with you one of the most shocking moments in Nigeria's history that, of course, led to uh, so much conversations, maybe also led to the loss of a particular election and um, a lot more. On this day in uh, Chibok, in Borno State, 276 mostly Christian female students were kidnapped from the secondary school by Islamic terrorist group Boko Haram. It was, uh, of course, in the town Chibok in Borno State. 57 of the schoolgirls, according to reports, escaped in the months following the incident, while others were rescued by Nigerian military forces on several occasions since. Some have described their capture um, in appearances on international human rights conferences. On the night of the 14th of April, members of the Islamic Jihadist group Boko Haram attacked the school. Uh, and a few hours prior to the raid, residents in Chibok had received phone calls from neighboring villages warning them of the incoming attack. The militants also engaged approximately 15 soldiers based in Chibok who were unable to stop the attack as militants had superior numbers and firepower. The attack lasted for only about five hours, uh, during which houses in Chibok were also burned down. Uh, it's, it's, um, well, it's, it's a very, very sad tale, and in the immediate aftermath of the attack, local vigilantes and parents searched the Sambiza forests for uh, those uh, girls in an attempt to rescue them, uh, but of course to no avail. Uh, the children were aged from 16 to 18 years of age and were in their final year of school. Amnesty International, in, uh, of course in reaction, condemned the Nigerian government, stating that they believed the Nigerian military had four hours advance warning before the kidnapping. The overwhelming majority of the kidnapped girls were Christians who were forced to convert to Islam. And of course, that's where, um, you know, in later stories, we got to hear about Leah Sharibu um, in another um, incident. Um, but this, um, I, I'm going to stop here, but this has been, you know, like I said, one of the, the most shocking and saddest moments in Nigeria's history. Mm -hmm. Um, and the reactions to it also, the failure also to rescue these girls, there's uh, still 112 of them still unaccounted for. Um, and it hurts mostly because you then get to imagine what these girls have been through mm -hmm. in the last seven years since this happened. You also get to imagine what the parents, the loved ones of these girls have been through in the last seven years. How many of them have given up hope of ever, ever finding these girls? Um, how many of them have also maybe even died in the last seven years without ever getting to see their daughters again? Um, it also makes you to imagine what the situation may have been like for these girls. Have they been sold off? Have they been married? Have they been raped? Have they been abused um, in the hands of these um, 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 insurgents? Um, and it's, it's, it's painful, really. If you remember in 2014, and that's why I mentioned the electoral process back then, that it also was one of the things, I believe, that led to uh, the former President Goodluck Jonathan uh, losing the election, I believe. Um, there was a massive campaign, not just here in Nigeria, but across the world. Uh, world leaders, celebrities, and very, very popular people stood up with the Bring Back Our Girls um, 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 poster, um, demanding that the government rescues them. There is conspiracy theories, there is um, the, you know, different theories on how all of this played out and why the government failed to rescue them, mm -hmm. why the government was dragging its feet, you know, do we really know where they are, how big is Sambisa Forest, it's just been so much and it's draining. You know, this thing you talked about, it, it, it probably was one of the reasons why the former president lost his election. Remember, when it happened, he didn't, I mean, there was, it was as if the federal government did not believe it actually happened. The first 72 hours, which was very critical, nothing concrete happened. And then you had the former president's wife coming on national TV and saying stuff and all of that. So like you said, the way it was handled probably, um, you know, it's just it's something Nigerians will never, ever be proud of. Well, could it have been handled better? Yes. In the first 72 hours, absolutely yes. Could it also have been handled better in the first week? Yes. In the first year? Yes. In the last six, seven years? Absolutely, Even yes. Even now, yes. We have continued, and we have to admit that as a country and as a government, we've continued, we've failed the Chibok girls. Absolutely. You know, we've, we've completely failed them. You know, I, over, you know, a couple of years ago, I used to ask how large really is Borno State? 
how large really is the Sambisa forest? You know, people would say, oh, it's as big as Belgium, it's as big as... Bro I, I don't... I, those things don't matter to me if we have a, a government in power that was entirely serious because when it's time for election, we can reach all those areas. When it's time for campaigning, we reach all those areas and we're able to, you know, spread the message across those areas. And so why is it so hard for us to comb every single part of it? There was, of course, the part where they said, oh, you know, they have to be careful with rescuing them so that there's no collateral damage and all of that story. But all of those things don't matter if seven years later you still have not rescued them. Absolutely. And and the strangest thing is we've had a series of abductions over and over yeah. again. Not just the Chibok girls now. You've had... The Dapchi, the Skagara, the Skankara, there's, there's so many of them. Oh, God, help us. We'll talk about it. It's one of the things we're talking about on the show this morning, so look out for it. Absolutely. Um, Bukola Shoni Barre will be joining us. Mm -hmm, true. So, Osage took you to 2014. I'm taking you to 2013. So, we are going back in the day and this time around is outside nigeria let's talk about kevin hart you know him yeah the comedian yes kevin daniel hart is an american stand-up comedian actor and producer born and raised in philadelphia pennsylvania and hart was charged on the 14th of april 2013 on suspicion of drunk driving after his black mercedes nearly collided with a tanker truck on a southern california freeway hart failed a field sobriety test and was booked for misdemeanor dui uh, he was held on a five thousand dollar bond and Jacob said the Mercedes was being driven erratically at over 90 uh, MPH and nearly slammed into a gas tanker. Hart later addressed the incident on Twitter. And on the 5th of August 2013, Hart was sentenced to three years of probation after pleading no contest to one count of driving under the influence of alcohol. I don't know if you are one of, the, uh, one of his fans. I, I, I love not watching really. him. Oh, not really? Well, I mean, well, I mean, not really, you know, it's me just saying, anyway, let's, <laughs> <laughs> not really, you know, I, I just feel like, you know, some, sometimes the comedy is forced, you know, oh, but, okay. but he's a great stand-up comedian, mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm excited about the level of success that he's had in the last few years, sure. so, you know, in movies, mm. he was able to, you know, reach deeper within himself and, and move, beyond. Uh, move beyond, you know, just doing comedy, went into movies, created his own movies, and he's, he's had amazing levels of success, mm -hmm. um, and that part excites me for him, because I always love to see black comedians and black um, celebrities win. True. Um, regardless of how long your career spans, let it span 50 years or keep winning all through those 50 years. Mm. Um, and of course, there's also the controversy where he allegedly cheated on his wife. There's, there's been yeah, so much that. that's happened. Plus, I don't know this thing about heart and, um, you know, uh, crashes. He had another one not too long ago. You know, this happened in 2013 yes. and then there was another one. I, I, I just hope he's, he's careful. <laughs> it is. It needs to be. It needs, needs to, to be, be uh, putting yeah. extra care. Yeah. Whatever. So I mean, not too much to talk about on that um, that particular topic. We're wrapping this up, right? Yes, we are. Yes. All right. So that's what we have for you today in history. Uh, we are going to be looking deeper into the Chiba Girls uh, conversation um, on the show this morning. Bukola Shunibari, a member of the Bring Back Our Girls group, will be joining us to speak on seven years later, and the theme for this year is until we are all free. I believe uh, until yes. That's what it is. And so, oh, until all are free, I beg your pardon. Um, and so that's what we're going to be moving into uh, in a bit to share what the journey has been like in the last seven years, what their demands still are from the Nigerian government, and the possibilities of still bringing this 112 girls back home. Um, that comes up in a bit. Don't go anywhere. Still here on The Breakfast. <laughs> 